Uh, uh, so yeah, so like, uh, hi everyone. Uh, so, so a um, you know a few uh, years, uh, years or oh, not careers, but uh, but oh my god, I'll get this right eventually. A few years ago, uh, ago, uh, I uh, wondered, uh, I wondered uh, whether uh, it was uh, possible uh, to uh, improve uh, improve my uh, my typing uh, speeds. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you know this. Uh, this was uh, because uh, I, I don't know. I seemed uh, to have uh, hit, uh, you know, some uh, kind, some kind of uh, wall uh, with uh, with QWERTY, uh, with uh, with uh, QWERTY. And so I looked at Dvorak, and I looked at Coleman, and uh, Workman, and a bunch of these other layouts, and uh, none of them quite grabbed me. Uh, but then I stumbled upon stenography, and uh, and so stenography is the process of writing in shorthand, uh, which on a keyboard is performed through the use of uh, corded, or well, not that, uh, corded uh, keystrokes, uh, strokes, uh, and uh, so that basically means it's like uh, you know where you uh, where you uh, press uh, multiple uh, keys. Uh, together, uh, you know, kind, uh, kind uh, of like, uh, like uh, playing. Whoops, uh, kind of like uh, playing, not praying, but actually like playing the uh, the piano. Uh, I'll get that right eventually. Piano. There we go. Um, and so, professional sonographers and court reporters. Uh, have used this system to capture text at the speed of speech, which can get to you know 200 or even 300 words a minute. Obviously, I'm like really far away from uh, those kinds of speeds, um, but um, but it has been a lockdown art for a really long time, and you know its software had been proprietary, uh, and the specialised uh, keyboards used for it uh, were pretty much uh, they cost about as much as a high-end uh, computer. Uh, and so, uh, thanks to the uh, you know the efforts of the uh, Open Steno project, uh, we now have Plubber, which is an open source uh, stenography engine uh, available to everyone, uh, which can then turn uh, any uh, N key rollover keyboard into a fully fledged steno cording uh, machine. And uh, what do I mean by uh, N key rollover? Is um, if I go back to uh, my terminal here and, uh, and I can press, like I guess, all the keys on my keyboard at once. Uh, nearly got them all, but there's multiple keys that are being pressed there and each key is receiving an input uh, from there. So that's the N in the N key rollover. And typical commercial keyboards will allow you uh, about, say, six keys of simultaneous input. So that's enough for you to do some kind of complicated uh, you know, keyboard shortcuts or whatnot, but uh, not enough for stenography. Uh, so anyway, what you're sort of seeing on screen here on, on the right hand side is my, uh, my dedicated hobbyist steno machine. Uh, it's my, my Georgie, I'm quite fond of it. Uh, and, um, uh, and below it you can see the, uh, the keyboard layout. Um, and that is uh, basically you know, showing you, uh, like, uh, you know, what, uh, what keys uh, I'm pressing uh, together. Um, and, uh, and at the very bottom of the screen there you can see something that looks a bit like a log. And uh, it is basically showing you the um, yeah like the logged output of my keystrokes and what they translate to, and so you know a lot of these these sort of keyboard strokes I think they yield more output per keystroke than pretty much any other input method available, uh, and uh, you know that output there can be anything from a single letter so we can go say you know you can see on the keyboard there we've got the S T P H keys. Uh, but, if we, but there are some letters that you may notice that aren't uh, on there, aren't, uh, represented on the keyboard. So if you want a B, that's HR corded together, and D is TK corded together, uh, N is TPH, uh, J is SKWR, Z is STKPW altogether. Um, but of course, you know, this is just for uh, you know, a single letter. It wouldn't be too much different from your, uh, your current keyboard. If, uh, if that's all it did. So, you know, where the, uh, the magic of Steno comes through is, you know, being able to do, you know, multiple, uh, multiple words. So, you know, hello world, for example. Um, and, uh, and, you know, multiple words, let's say. So let's say I wanna do like, um, uh, you know, this is a 
pen. So like a three word, uh, three word phrase there. Uh, you know, it was on the uh, table, for example. Uh, there are also, you know, full phrases, uh, you know, even longer than that we, that we can use, like say, for example, uh, here's one, like ladies and gentlemen of the jury, something that a court reporter would use quite a lot. Uh, or say, uh, you, know, as a, you know, as a matter of fact, I'll get that one, smacked. No, that was, didn't quite get it, there you go, as a matter of fact. So, uh, so we can do that with just like one chord. Um, there are also some party tricks that I can do, like say, for example, uh, here we go, uh, suffrage, so supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I would have no idea how to actually spell that, but I know the chord for it and I can, you know, input it in a, output it in a split second. Um, obviously, and also we're not uh, limited to just uh, ASCII output either, you know, we can do, um, you know, emojis as well. I can say I want, uh, I don't know, like the laugh emoji here, uh, and maybe I want to, you know, fl uh, oh, here we go, uh, um, hold on, uh, there we go, flip table as well. So, um, uh, so you know, we can, uh, can do other different types of character uh, outputs as well. Uh, where I find uh, in dev life, it, it can be quite... Uh, Convenient is with shell commands, like say, for example, I want to do like, um, you know, git add and git add everything there and say like, you know, git commit with a message like that. And, I, and I'll just go, you know, uh, I don't know, like some like, you know, initial uh, initial commit and then I'll do like a git push and I can just do that all of that instantaneously. Um, and, you know, we can do that with uh, Elixir stuff as well, like say, for example, uh, you know, mix, uh, let's say, you know, Phoenix new and then say like, you know, our app name. And then we can just like pass in the uh, the live flag, um, and you know, let's say we want to uh, kick off a Rails server, a uh, Rails server, a um, a Phoenix server as well. So we can do like say uh, IEX mix, and uh, and then from there go um, uh, Phoenix, and then server. Oops, not after, but server. There we go. And it sort of does some of the uh, uh, you know puts in the the S flag in IEX and puts the dot in Phoenix server for me. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, Steno is also not necessarily limited to just text output either. You know, we can, uh, we can basically use it for computer hotkeys. So say, for example, if I, uh, if I just sort of get out of this, I'll go uh, seven keys or seven lines up here. I'll just uh, up, I'll highlight supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I'll copy, oh, that is not what I wanted to do. Let's get out of uh, that. Oh, cool. I love it when this happens. This is not what I was expecting. Um, uh, okay, uh, that, is, that is really weird. But uh, let's, uh, let's see if I can uh, try that. Uh, no! Undo, undo. Redo. Is it going to let me do it? Redo, come on. I know you can do this. Oh, boo. Okay, pretend that all of that output is actually still there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but so, but you can actually see, you can see here that, say for example, um, with the uh, with the hotkeys um, uh, down the bottom there of the log, you can see that there is a like a hash right there. So that is kind of like how we can output the right arrow uh, key there. So any key on the keyboard, you can actually press even if it doesn't uh, even if it doesn't um, uh, output anything. And uh, another thing that uh, that you can see in the log down the bottom there is that I've got uh, some uh, chords that are outputting. Um, uh, a call to a script. So there's like a, you know, command shell there. So, you know, being able to run these scripts is made possible because of uh, Plubber's plugin system, uh, you know, in this case, allowing me to run a uh, shell command, which in this case actually runs some Apple script uh, to determine, uh, you know, how uh, in this case a redo should be done because every program seems to want to use different uh, keyboard shortcuts to do that. Um, if I could use anything else apart from Apple Script, I absolutely would, uh, but I don't know of any cross-platform systems programming language uh, that's available. Um, if you do, then like, please let me know. That would be uh, absolutely lovely. Um, so anyway, since Steno can output anything that a keyboard can, it stands to reason that it can also be used for coding. Uh, but writing code isn't the same as writing prose. Uh, we have text structures like, you know, modules and functions and if blocks and tag tuples and whatever else. And I'm lazy and I don't want to have to write, uh, you know, all of that by hand if I don't have to. Um, I know that plenty of devs use their IDEs in order to, uh, you know, sort of automate some of the, um, uh, some of the boilerplate uh, that you typically write in code. But since I'm a Vim user, I had to go looking for plugins 
And since uh, Steno itself is uh, pretty much snippets on steroids, uh, I looked up and I found, uh, you know, something for uh, for Vim, which was basically came to the uh, came to the um, uh, I came across Ulti Snips. So this is what I use. Ulti Snips is what I use to essentially write a another layer of snippets that sits on top of Steno, and that helps me at least kind of feel like I am, you know, coding Elixir in a bit more of a, I guess, a natural way. And, uh, and I'll show you what I mean here. So I'll just quickly go back over to the terminal here and I've, op I've opened up a, uh, an Elixir file. So let's say I want to do a string. So I'll just uh, I'll type string here and string is a trigger word for my snippet here. So I'll just do the tab button and then it turns it into a string and I can go and put, you know, some value in here. And then I'll, uh, and then I'll basically, I've got a, a tab stop chord that I use that progresses forward. And then I'm at the end of the string and I can continue doing, you know, what I want to do. Similar, similar kind of thing for uh, a list. I'll just say, all right, I want a list, tab stop, and then here I am. So I can just kind of like put in, uh, you know, a, uh, um, you know, a list of, uh, you know, numbers in this case and then tab stop to the end of that list. Uh, similarly, you know, in Elixir, we uh, like to use lists to prepend uh, values to collections. So I can do say like, uh, you know, list uh, and uh, prepend, and uh, that will give me this. So I can go, all right, let's say we wanna take a post and we'll, it will pre we'll prepend it to a list of posts. Uh, and, then, uh, and then move to the end and then keep on going after that. Uh, similarly with uh, with keyword lists. So uh, keyword lists. So I've got now a, a set of uh, you know atom keys and uh, atom keys with uh, values there. So I can go and uh, move forward and say, okay, I want to have say like a foo key there, and then say I want foo to output the or to have the value of the string bar. So I can nest my snippets here, and I can just say, all right, well I want to put in uh, a string, and uh, where are we here? Oh, tab. So, and then that needs to be a uh, bar. And then I'll just, I'll move forward uh, in tab stops to the end of the string and then out to the end of the, uh, the list or the keyword list there as well. Um, similar for maps as well. So I've got, uh, you know, a map with like a, you know, simple, uh, you know, key, uh, key value pairs here. Um, and, uh, you know, let's say I, I'll you know, do the same kind of thing here, so bar. Uh, I can add in a, another sort of set of key values if I want uh, here as well. So, you know, that can be just kind of like a, you know, a baz and then a, uh, uh, and then not, not a yucks, but a quax. And, uh, and I can get rid of that ending comma there and then tab space all the way to the end of the map. And, uh, and there I go. Similarly, I can do, do a, um, uh, a map, uh, where are we, map. Uh, and uh, if I want the keys to be atoms, then I can just get rid of that quote there and it will just sort of like change it over to, uh, to atom keys there. And just sort of do the same, uh, same kind of thing. Um, similarly with structs. So if I want a, uh, a struct there and I can say, all right, I want a post. And then, uh, and then, you know, we can pattern match on, uh, on an empty post if we want or a post without any specific, uh, you know, named values here. Um, so it's giving me the option to delete these if I wanted to, but you know, let's say that I will, I'll just keep these and I'll say, all right, I want to, you know, uh, pattern match on the ID and then there we go. Uh, and, uh, so, you know, we've got, uh, so as, as well as, uh, structs, we've got, uh, say tuples as well. So that's pretty important in, uh, in Elixir, not tulips, but, uh, tuples. And so this is a typical one. So I've just got like a first and second value. And if I want to, I can add more. Uh, on the end, or I can just say, all right, I want a, uh, an okay tuple. And it will just kind of give me this, uh, this you know, it'll set it up so that uh, it'll have the first, um, uh, first element of the tuple to be an okay atom, and then I can just put the value in. Um, I can have uh, if statements. So if, if some condition, so I don't know, like if true, do something, uh, you know, else, go and do something else. Uh, we may not want the else statement here, so it's giving me the option to delete it if I want. Um, so, uh, but you know, let's uh, tab through and we'll just keep it and it will get me to the, uh, to, you know, the end of the, uh, of the block there. Similar kind of thing for case statements as well. So uh, if I say have, um, you know, case and I want to match on some number, and then I'll say, all right, here's the first pattern, you know, one. I won't worry about any kind of guard clause there. And then I'll just say, all right, I want to do something. 
uh, and then you know then it will take me to the uh, the default condition there. Uh, if say I need to put another condition in there, I'll just sort of I'll go back a tab space and I'll just sort of escape out of this. I'll uh, open up a new line and I'll say, okay, well give me another condition, and that's another tab. Uh, that's another uh, snippet that I got there. So I'll say, all right, when you know it's two, then go and do something else, and then I'll uh, continue tabbing back down to the default thing, default um, uh, the default value, and uh, and I'll say, all right, I'll just put a uh, oops a comment there comment I should say uh, com yeah right comment so like you know do something do something I should say and then tab stop uh, all the way to the end there um, so that's all very good for like the basic features of, uh, of the language but uh, you know let's say if we wanted to do a, uh, a function call so let's say if I wanted to do say like a uh, you know filter so filters a uh, you know I've got a snippet for that and uh, I'll say that, all right, well, filter is a function that is present on four different modules there. So on enum, map, stream, and keyword. So I could, I've got uh, a choice tab stop here where I can choose, you know, which one it should go on. So, you know, let's say I want to do uh, enum, so the first one. Uh, I've got uh, the enumerable here might be piped into this function. Uh, so I've got the option to remove it if I wanted, if I want to. But, uh, you know, let's just say that uh, we're using that, uh, uh, that's that collection of numbers that we had up the top there. And then we'll move along and we'll say, all right, I want to you know, create a function for that where you know, it, it takes in a number and then that number is say like, um, oh, I don't know, say like, you know, not learn, but uh, you know, less than, uh, less than uh, say three. And then, uh, and then we'll move to the end there. Um, for the anonymous function that you saw there, we've, we can also do that with the um, uh, with the capture version as well. So if we sort of do uh, you know do filter again, go enum filter. Uh, actually, we'll get rid of this and we'll just sort of focus on the uh, on the function. And we'll do we'll do um, a function uh, and then uh, capture, and then that will sort of give us the uh, the shorthand there. So we can do maybe uh, you know you know do where the value is more than three or something like that. And get to the end of the, uh, of the snippet there. Um, going even more complex than that, like we can do say like a, an ecto query. So say for example, if we wanted to get, uh, if we've got like a database of posts and we want to be able to get all of them and sort them by their IDs in, des in descending order. So I've got like a keyword for all and it will go, all right, query, uh, re re repo all there. And uh, okay, so what's your queryable going to be? The queryable and echo is going to start with, uh, with from and, uh, and that's yet another nested uh, snippet that we've got. So let's, we can move forward and go, all right, well, what do you want? You want I want, you know, for P in, uh, in post. Uh, didn't mean to do that. Let's see if that didn't, didn't uh, uh, post, post, come on, do post. There we go. Uh, okay, so uh, that worked. And, uh, and let's say I need to uh, order it. Uh, I need to order it by some kind of expression. That expression is going to be a list. Uh, and, uh, and within that list, uh, I need to put a, uh, a descending, uh, some, uh, some descending uh, options in there. So I want to do a uh, descending, uh, oops, tab on that. And uh, I get the choice of doing a descending with nulls last, nulls first, or don't care about nulls. So I'm just going to say, all right, I don't care about that. Tab stop over to the next field there and go, all right, I want descending by you know, p.id. Now I'm pretty pretty well nested in uh, in snippet land there, so I'm going to keep on tab stopping. Hopefully it'll get to the point where it'll highlight the prefix. Ah, yes, it did. Okay. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to decide to you know just delete that. I'm not going to need it, and then it removes that trailing co trailing comma, and then that's the uh, that's the uh, the repo all query done. Now of course in Elixir we don't have uh, just functions floating out in space uh, in nowhere. Uh, we can go like, uh, you know, we need modules as well. So we can go and, uh, you know, create a module like that with, um, with some, uh, you know, names put in automatically. Uh, and, uh, and we can choose to, you know, use a particular module as well. Um, this is the, uh, I guess, the, the, the standard way that you would use, you know, some module in Elixir. Uh, what I want to do here is maybe use one that is uh, built into, say, Phoenix. And I'll say, all right, I want to use, um, you know, some module and I want it to be like a live view. So I'll just uh, choose, uh, choose number five there. And then of course, uh, you know, within uh, live view modules here, we've always got some kind of render function, right? So uh, here's a render function that I can sort of help gen generate my, uh, my heaps from there. And then in here, I can go and put my, um, 
uh, my, what is it, my, uh, the HTML that I want. So let's say I want a div and I want the ID to have like, say like a post IDs interpolated inside of it. So I can go, um, uh, where are we here? Oh, am I doing it right? I wasn't doing it right. Okay, there's the div. Okay, so I can go uh, ID. Um, I can't use quotation marks here because here, we're in uh, we're in Heek, so I'm going to have to change this uh, here to curly brackets, so that will do it for both sides. From here, I'm going to want to uh, to uh, put in a string, and let's say we've got like post dash, and then we want some kind of interpolated value in there, and that will be say for example the uh, you know the post uh, dot id, and uh, we can continue further along here. That class uh, we can just make that a string as well, and then that'll be fine. Um, and then we can sort of keep on doing, you know, markup in here and I'll spare you from watching me uh, do any more markup. Um, typically also in live views, we've got, uh, you know, we have like say handle event, uh, uh, handle uh, events uh, functions. So, you know, in this case, I'll say handle some event, uh, you know, I don't know, like handle event clicked. Uh, do I care about the params or, if I, or do I not care about the params? Uh, I'm just gonna go, I don't really care about them. So I'm gonna choose two here for just the unsigned params. What do I want to return here? Do I want to, want to return a no reply or an actual reply? Uh, it's pretty standard to do no reply, so I'm just going to go one. Do I need to change the socket? Uh, all right, yeah, sure, I'll change the socket. Do, do you want to change it using a sign? It's like, all right, yep, sure. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, change some, uh, change some, um, uh, some atom value? It's like, yep, sure. I'll go, all right, foo, change that to, uh, I don't know, like, you know, what we did before, string bar, and then that gets us to the end of where the snippet is, and we can continue doing whatever else is necessary, uh, you know, in this uh, in this function. Um, but uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Uh, and uh, but I hope this gives you a bit of a taste of what. Uh, stenography is and how it can be used in the daily workflow of a of a developer. Uh, if you are interested in uh, giving Steno a try, I uh, definitely recommend going and checking out the guides on the Plover GitHub page. Uh, it'll help you to get set up with uh, Plover the software. And uh, it's also got a bunch of learner resources as well to do the really hard stuff, which is uh, actually learning stenography. Um, also, there is a really fantastic community. Uh, they usually hang out on the Plover Discord. So uh, there's all sorts of people there, like court reporters, hardware hackers, uh, you know, software developers, um, real-time captioners. Uh, you know, all sorts of people are there, um, all to, all, you know, sharing their uh, their interest in stenography. So if you're interested, definitely go and uh, and you know get on the Discord and, and feel free to go and ask some questions. They're a very welcoming community. They all talk really fast. Like scroll past. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite that fast, uh, <laughs> um, but they do type pretty fast. Um, and uh, and then finally, if you want to see like a longer form uh, Elixir demo in action, uh, I put a video up on YouTube that basically recreates uh, Chris McCord's um, Twitter timeline clone. Uh, he did it in 15 minutes. I took like an hour and 12. Uh, minutes, um, but uh, but I did it all longhand and with no cuts. Uh, so uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, go check it out and smash like. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you. Uh, thanks very much for listening. And uh, if anyone's got any questions, I'd be more than happy to attempt to answer them. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Sorry, if you've got... Oh, do you want to hold on, Ching? Do you want to give? Um... Give Josh the mic. Oh, it's all give some up. <laughs> Just so that everyone. Uh... When you're doing the two keys above each other, how do you press them both at the same time? You just press in the middle to get them both. The, the two keys above each other. Uh, which which ones do you mean? Well, any of them, where they're stacked on top of each other. Oh right, S sorry. Um, so what you should probably know is that um, home row on a Steno keyboard is the gap between these uh between the you keys there the so you, you yeah that. you're just pressing them in the middle there so uh you know well, two keys get pressed like this and you know four keys are usually with two fingers it's only like towards like the pinky finger like on the right hand side this can sometimes be responsible for pressing like these four keys at the same time that kind of chord doesn't happen very often because it's hard um but uh but you know it can it can happen but it's it's the only finger that i know of that i think is uh, responsible for pressing four keys at the same time but yeah it's uh it's just like you know press 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 and then you know two keys like that and then two keys like that 
Yeah. Oh, sorry, Josh. I'll I'll grab. Uh... <laughs> yep. Uh, it's quite interesting to see the demo in Vim. Um, I was wondering. Um, I'm an Emacs user, or I was in the back in the day before VS Code came along. I'm used to like yes yeah, snippets and what have you. Yep. So what have you what of what you were demonstrating in terms of expansion and sort of editing speed? What is what proportion of that would you just put down to like snippets versus your sort of key coding? Uh, it wasn't it wasn't immediately clear to me um, that I wasn't just watching like snippet expansion. Yep. Uh, for the most part, you were watching a lot of snippet expansion going on there. So there's no, there's no doubt. So anytime that you saw a, uh, a like a word that was, you know, written fast on screen, that was a steno part. Right. Uh, that, that was that was pure steno. But uh, basically, whenever uh, like a word was written and then it all of a sudden magically changed into something, uh, that was snippets. But your so, claim would be that if you're proficient at stenography, then mm. even bringing up even the abbreviations that trigger the snippets is a is quicker yeah well so rather than i guess that where where the difference is with me is that rather than them being abbreviations so obviously people that don't use steno will use ulti snips and other steno as well and they will usually have some kind of mnemonics or abbreviations that they will have to remember right. but for me i've got all of my snippets that are just words right. so you know I can, I can sort of talk to you in a sort of conversational way and say look i want a list and then you can see list on there and you see like uh, you know the word list transform into this uh into like an actual list and and i guess that's kind of like where the difference is uh, there, but you are seeing, for the most part, in coding land, um, not in like the um, the Git commands that I was showing you before. That's all Steno land, uh, but uh, but you know all of the you know the fancy stuff uh, there was all snippets. So that was uh, leveraging uh, ulti snips very hard. Yeah, and then just maybe back to the sort of Steno, purely the Steno bit. Yep. So how did you how have you found the you've ob you obviously would already abandoning QWERTY and you looked at um, Vorjak or whatever and uh, have you found the transition to like Steno, how do you find it, do you actually, are you mindfully using it every day at work and in, in an attempt to sort of ingrain it, how are you finding that transition? So the transition for me was quite hard and I went I guess hybrid for most of last year. So I had uh, my Steno keyboard in front of me and then I had my, my Ergo Docs, which is uh, sort of another split keyboard uh, behind it for when I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do in Steno land or I came up with a, a, a hard coding problem that I didn't, want to, I didn't want to deal with Steno, I just wanted to write it. So I would sort of go back and forth between the two keyboards. Um, and that actually continued until this year. So like starting, my, one of my new, new Year's resolutions was to go cold turkey and to do Steno for absolutely everything. And so I've now cleared my desk of any QWERTY keyboards and I only have the uh, the steno keyboard there and so basically I'm just going to force myself to just like you know go through the pain and uh, grit my teeth and just like you know just just do it <laughs> what, what's the hardest like what is the hardest part of it what's the is it the overcoming other muscle memory or is it actually remembering what you need to do to get the steno right if you understand the if you know what i mean by the difference i mean there's i guess there's uh i guess it's the, the what's the hardest thing i mean once you know a lot of the all of the steno rules uh then you know you can get an intuitive feel as to you know what words um uh, you know, what words like should sound like or, the, or how they should chord. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you just sort of get them wrong. And, you know, what I'll end up doing sometimes is if, if there's, uh, if I can't figure out, say, like a one chord or, or a one stroke, uh, you know, if I can't do a word in one stroke, then I'll just kind of like sound it out phonetically. So that's kind of what Sino is all about. It'll be like, you know, phonetically sound it out. It might be inefficient, right. uh, but I'll do that. And then I'll be like, surely there must be like a one stroke uh, you know, outline for this particular word, and I'll look it up in my dictionaries, and uh, and I'll usually find it. And uh, and if there isn't one where I think there should be one, then I'll go and just 
write it in there and, and add it in there. So, um, you know, I've got basically years worth of customization in my stenographic dictionaries there, that, and they're just kind of, you know, full of, you know, words there, like, you know, new words that weren't in the original dictionaries, alternative, um, you know, outlines or spellings of words that existed already in there. And, uh, and then just, you know, other stuff that, you know, runs scripts or, you know, does, uh, you know, commands or Elixir commands or whatever else. So there's, uh, you know, usually when you start with Steno, you start with just the default dictionary and then you, you quickly start to hit walls and you want to be able to start customizing and adding your own stuff. And uh, that's what I've done for you know, the last few years. Maybe someone should invent a language based on um, courtroom vernacular. Um, someone's, <laughs> someone's done it for Shakespearean English. Uh, there is actually a programming language where you can say things like forsooth and then start an expression. So maybe if someone just went, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and that was how you opened a module, uh, that would be, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's a kind of mad idea. I don't know why I came up with that. Anyway, lawyer language. <laughs> yeah, cool. Does anyone have any other questions? Yep, feel free to grab the, the microphone there so people online can hear. Uh, so you mentioned a default dictionary. So basically, yep. that's like uh, without any uh, customization, you have a way of uh, in, uh, inputting all the English words or, or like uh, common phrases. I guess is that, that the idea, and and that's shared between all people. Yeah, that's right. right. So so you start off with uh, a. So these are all of my dictionaries uh, that I have, and then the one at the very bottom here. Uh, so these are all basically, well, they're originally JSON files, but uh, I've sort of gone and used a, a plugin to convert them all into Markdown files so I can have the uh, documentation for them, uh, you know, in the same file. But this, this one at the bottom here, main.json, is essentially the dictionary of the person. Uh, her name is Mirabai Knight, and she is the, the founder of the Open Steno project. And it's basically her dictionary, which became known as uh, Plover Theory. So, you know, it's got a bunch of, you know, medical terminology, it's got a bunch of legal terminology, and a whole bunch of other, you know, dictionary words in there. Um, it's not necessarily a complete, uh, you know, dictionary of every single word ever, uh, you know, as evidenced by the fact that I've, uh, you know, created a whole bunch of other dictionaries uh, here as well above them. But basically, it provides a great uh, building block or starting point, uh, you know, for you to uh, to go and especially as a learner, I mean, as a learner, I just kind of like took that as gospel and was just like, okay, uh, if a word is not in this dictionary, then it must not exist. So uh, I'll have to just, you know, spell it manually or something and then that got so painful that i'm like okay i have to put in a dictionary entry for this particular word but this this particular one that main.json uh every person that uh, that gets uh you know plover the software will have a copy of this dictionary so that's where they start from you don't necessarily have to stick with that dictionary because there are plenty of other sten stenographic theories um but uh but this is what you get with uh, with plover oh. Okay. So it's a plover, a plover specific rather than sterno uh, specific. Like uh, different people who uses sterno could be using different uh, code for for the same words. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, plenty of people have uh, have shared, including myself, have shared their uh, their dictionaries online. So um, you know, there are there were people whose dictionaries I would look to for reference, and uh, and I'd look at some of the ways that they would you know stroke out or you know do chords for specific words, and I would either agree with them and steal them, or I would just say, ah, oh, no, I don't really think about of them like that, and then I'd you know write my own instead. Cool, cool. Thank you. Just quickly, uh, then, uh, how do you deal with like chord clashes? Like, do these dictionaries let you know if you've got a chord clash, or is it highly like? Ah, uh, right. Should... Okay. Um, yeah. So there are times where uh, there's been a clash, or there uh, where uh, there's been an outline which I've wanted to use for something else, and I've had to go and override uh, some entries in the original dictionary. Um, but uh, but yeah, when it comes to clashes. Um, I mean, this this is a, essentially a stack, and all of the dictionaries up the top have higher precedence than the bottom. So, uh, so that's pretty much like technically how it works. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you find uh, you know a way, um, uh, you know if you find that uh, there's an outline there that clashes and you don't like one of them, it is certainly not against the law to just you know change it to uh, to however you would like it to output. Thanks.
Um, actually, just before we finish, I can see that there's one question in the chat. No, it's not a question. It's just Rob's mind is blown. All right, sweet. Well, what a great way to finish off then. Everyone's mind is blown. Uh, thanks very much for, uh, to everyone online who, uh, who stuck with us, and thanks to you all uh, for, uh, for staying about. Uh, I'm not going to do the rest of the, the, sl the slide deck. Uh, let's just leave it at that. Thanks very much, and uh, we'll see you again next month. Thanks, Paul.